cool webinar today. Give you some value, serve you today, give you some amazing strategies to go forward and turn around this whole thing of work-life balance and what you can do, how you can actually get more work-life balance in your life, less stress, less exhaustion, more sleep, more awesomeness, more fun. Who doesn't want that today? Does that sound like you want that today? Yes. Awesome. I want that today. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Let's start this happening. <laughs> right. We're underway. So, coolest thing. This is cool. I love this topic because it... I'm going to choke now. <clears throat> oh. It's got two sides to it. And the thing that we want to focus on is I'm just going to have myself a quick drink of water. <laughs> breathe the wrong way. I did breathe the wrong way. Good thing I'm breathing, though. <clears throat> is... What we're going to take you through is that whole idea of how you can gain work-life balance and enhance your freedom and productivity. Now, the coolest thing about this <clears throat> is that for obviously many of you are in Melbourne, I guess not everybody that's going to watch this or that is on here is from Melbourne, but the thing that we're doing more of is looking at working remotely. Now, it is it is remotely possible. It is absolutely all right, and let's just play on that because it is totally possible for us to get this ability to have work-life balance working remotely. It is totally possible for us to have freedom and productivity when we are in this space. And those are the things that I want you to start thinking about because when we when we start putting that stuff into our top six inches and we start thinking about it like, that is possible, I can do that, then that's what you'll get. So our goal by the end of this training is that you will know how to gain work-life balance. All right? You'll know how to do it. Doesn't mean so that you're going to do it, but you'll know how to do it. And then the coolest thing is when we invest the time, effort, energy, all of those things into gaining work-life balance, we enhance our productivity and we enhance our freedom. Yes. And so that's where we're going with this, is to go, you know what, let's just focus on the fact that by the end of this, we've got increased productivity, we've got increased freedom in our life, and at the end of it, if you stay here, we'll actually give you a special gift. From us to you, we will give it to you, all right? And so but if you stay here until the end, we'll give you that amazingly awesome, cool gift. It is not one of those things of do this and you get a set of six steak knives, it's worthwhile staying for. So <laughs> what we're going to do, awesome. heads up on the way through, just so you know, and some of you are aware of us, <laughs> as if you're a little bit excited, <laughs> and we're going to be a little bit animated because things have to happen, and when you're on here working remotely, everything is totally possible, and so we will share that with you, that anything and everything is possible, all right? We might talk over each other, and that's all good. Full respect for each other. We're good at what we do. And so we want to tell you more and more and more and more. And then we kind of get a little bit excited and talk over each other sometimes. And sometimes <laughs> we might swear a little bit too. Okay? <laughs> what was that, Christine? We might swear. Because oh. <laughs> it's really good. Okay? So heads up. There you go. It's what you're in for. Slides are simple because there's no point, you know, having death by PowerPoint. Might as well enjoy us. And so what we want to do is keep it simple so that you can hear us, you can see us, and you can get that full energy of it instead of reading the slides. Because you know how on lots of those academic or lots of those, you know, teachy, loony slides, webinar, masterclasses that you jump into, you're like, reading, 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 reading. <laughs> and then you don't hear what they say. Not in this one, sunshine. All right? So you're in it. You're here. Heads up. Now you know what's coming at you. Time for you to yes. remove your distractions. So this thing, can you please, really cool photo too, by the way, can you please just make sure that the ding-dong bells, notifications, all those things are off because we love our life's work. Like this is what our life's work is and we want to share that with you. So right here, right now, we are giving you this full gift of our attention and our knowledge and our experience and our expertise. And we want you to receive that. So the best way for you to receive that is to make sure that you've got no distractions around you. So if you need to quickly just go and turn something off or put the kids in the cupboard or, you know, <laughs> just kidding, I'm kidding. All right. So whatever it might be, grab yourself a drink, get yourself sorted, and just quickly sort out what it is that you need to do. Kids are outside, hopefully keep it. <laughs> around the washing line. Um, so do those things. Just keep the distractions low, and then it means that we can share our life's work with you because that's what we love doing, right? 
Righty so. Cool. So, game on, folks. I love this topic. Absolutely love this. (laughs) This is, I love it because I hate it, and I mean that in (laughs) such such a positive way. So, what makes this training different is that, you get us, um, is that we're going to call it as it absolutely is, all right? We're not going to lie to you. We're not going to sugarcoat stuff, and we're not going to go, but if you do this, this might happen. No, because there's things if you do it, you're going to stay where you are, and you're going to get the same crap you're getting, right? When we talk about what goes through your top six inches, we're going to be honest and truthful about those types of things. We're going to tell you how things are, and we're going to give you and identify the practical ways that you can gain momentum to be able to go forward and get that freedom, increase that productivity, or at least clear out and clean out the things around you that are stopping you having that effective productivity in your life. Yes. Cool? Absolutely. Sounds good to me. So, now, when we do this, it can be really convenient for you to go, oh, but I'm just going to keep doing what I did before, and it feels comfortable, and it feels safe, and it's okay. But, see, what we want to do is give you the tested approaches that we've done, that our clients do, and then share those results with you and go, you know what? If it can work for us and it can work for our clients, it can work for you. Yes. That's my point, all right? So, (laughs) Dr. Elizabeth Pritchard is the amazing lady that is here in Walt Institute. She's a health professional, researcher, and leadership coach. Now, this is pretty, pretty remarkable, really, when you look at this, because... Elizabeth has coached over 700 leaders. Now, we're talking all levels of leaders, all right? Researchers and health professionals, all different levels of those. She's published internationally and in Thrive Global, over three decades of working in STEM. That's kind of an expertise that you really (laughs) want, a bit of an experience. You're like, hey, I want that. I want that person, okay? Mentors are Professor Paul Wood. AO and Ronnie Wood, high class people, globally recognized, amazing at what they do. Push the buttons, ask the tough questions, they go, oh, okay. Stretch us and push us, okay? Elizabeth works with Hudson Institute, Medical Research, places like Bionics, Monash University, and many more, doing what we do here at Walt Institute. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at someone that is a health professional, a researcher, a leadership coach, and has worked in all of these areas, there's a ton of experience there that you really, really want. And right. I love doing this. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Myself, that is me there, all right? I am a former elite athlete, educator, and performance coach. Now, the coolest thing is the more and more sort of distance I get from playing for New Zealand is I realise the expertise, the skills, the strategies, the tools that I learnt while I was doing it. I thought I was just playing hockey because <laughs> I was good. Still am. And so it's that kind of thing. It went, oh, my gosh. I learned how to play and how to perform under pressure. I learned how to work within a team. I learned how to coach teams as well. I captained our indoor hockey team as well. So I had to be responsible for my own game and other people's game as well. I had to make sure that I was switched on and be able to make sure that I had that team humming. All right? So for us to perform under pressure, we've got to work together. And so there's a fair chunk of that. That, that's one of my expertise is getting team members and teams to work well under pressure and then increase their performance. So they can actually bring their best game every single time. Now, I'm talking about in any realm of School of Dance, Royal New Zealand Ballet, Rugby League players, Hudson Institute of Medical Research, Bionics, Monash, and many, many more. All right? So I can transfer what I learned on the turf and put that into the lab, the boardroom, the office, anywhere. Excellent. Same mentors stretch and push my buttons like you don't know what, but it's the only way that I grow. It's the only way that I can keep myself going and keep improving and keep becoming the person that I truly am. And the reason that I am here for is what they help to give me the invisible kick in the pants with. Okay? So it's kind of exciting. So when you've got all of these things and we're going to go, here's the first bit. So here's the first bit that makes a difference because We're going to tell you what we did wrong because we don't want you to do this wrong. We don't want you to keep making the same mistakes. So we've done a lot of things right as well, all right? So the things that we've done right is what we're going to share with you right here, right now. We chill out. We don't climb mountains. We don't sit and have coffee. We have moments in the sun, no matter what the weather. Nope, the beanie and the warm jacket, (laughs) all right? 
We climb to the top of those mountains and push ourselves physically because it's the way to get the most out of our top six inches mentally and emotionally. We go and hang out with the amazing people like the Right Honourable Helen Clark, who is the past Prime Minister of New Zealand. And you know those moments when you're like, oh, I really want to go and talk to that person, but I'm too scared. Oh, we'd already given her some questions beforehand. And so it was like, mm, you want to go and talk to her and get a photo with her? Mm, a little bit nerved. We need to do this. It is for our benefit. And imagine what we can learn from that person. Imagine the questions that we can ask. Imagine the insights, the experience, and the information, and the know-how that she can share with us. <laughs> go and do it. Step up. We hang out with people that are in there doing it. Yeah. We go away to places to do our planning and our work where we can be creative. We identify the spaces that can bring out the best in us. We can have fun. We go and set ourselves up to be successful, to have that balance. Mm -hmm. Do the hard yards. Get the focus on. Get the work done. Whoosh, step back, have the fun, and ease off. Yeah. So it's these kinds of things is what we're talking about here. Hang out with the people that bring out the best in you. That's the things that we've done right. Now, as I said before, <laughs> just a couple, we didn't decide to go there, just a couple of things that we might not have done right. So we did them wrong. We did them wrong. We kept saying yes when we should have said no. Yep, I'll do that. Yep, I'll take that on. Oh, God, I want to be part of the team. Yes. Oh, I don't want to look bad in front. Oh, I can't look bad in front of my team. They'll think I'm done. They'll think I'm not a team player. Yes. <laughs> Do you get the point? We kept saying yes. And we loaded up and loaded up and loaded up. And then we got stressy. And then it's like that just that madness and craze that starts to happen. And then you get caught up in that whirlwind and it's just like <laughs> and you're not quite sure what's going on and you're not quite sure where you are. And then you just don't speak up. Yeah. And you just don't say anything. You're like, yes. And we just stay with the old habits because we're too scared to go forward because we're like, oh, I haven't got enough time. I, can't, I haven't got the energy, so I'm just going to be in this big, dark black hole. We can see a little bit of light, but mm. wow, wouldn't that be nice? Mm. <laughs> well, there's other people up there, but I couldn't do that. I could never do that. There's no way I could do that. Yes. And we're just not authentic and true to ourselves. And then we stay up, stay up till all hours working. Yes. Because we just keep saying yes because we take no more work. And we just stay up and we stay in that hole and we don't speak up for ourselves and we stay in the habits and the routines that we've got because we don't actually know what to do and we don't know where to go and we don't know how to get out of that hole. And so this is the things that we want to share with you. Yeah. So when we look at it, we need to go, okay, what is it we're working with? Let's just call it out. What are we working with? We're working with work-life balance. Now, the thing about work-life work -life balance came in when the whole Western society went, mm, let's get this job work stuff happening. And so it became industrialized. And then this thing about an eight-hour work day, eight-hour leisure day, and eight hours of sleep came in. And so then we started thinking that, oh, we need to do work. Oh, but then to get ahead, I need to do more work. And so we became part of the system that just kept running around, going through that rat race, through that little rat wheel. You know what it's like? <laughs> eight hours of work, come home, eat dinner, watch TV, do something, have fun. No, probably go to sleep. Get up the next morning, grab what we need to do, oh, go to work. Yes, I'll keep doing the jobs. I'll do whatever you want me to do. We keep coming home, same, same, same. Right? right? It's like the wheel that we got stuck in. And so we want to pull you out of that wheel, right? <laughs> and we're not talking about equal hours in all parts of your life. It's not eight, 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 right? None of that stuff. So things are not going to be equal in your life. And this is where we're going to call it out. And this is one of the truths here that I want to give you. Tarting is on, ears on. So sometimes you are going to have to put in a long day because you're like, that needs to get done. Okay, cool. Make some extra hours. I've got to get those extra hours done. What can I do? How can I make it work? Okay, if I get so-and-so to get the dinner ready, get the kids ready, then that's that bit taken care of. Or if I set myself up and I've got dinner prepared from the night before and then it means I can get an easy dinner and then I can sit in the best place in the house that gives me lots of light and energy. You get the point? So we're not talking everything being equal. Mm. Sometimes you have to do the long hours, but you yes. can still set yourself up to be able to do it and yep. do it well. Definitely. Sometimes you can go, you know what, I've done all my work. Or, you know what, that can wait until tomorrow. Am I going to die? Are they going to die? No. And that's one of those harsh questions that sometimes you really need to ask. Absolutely. 
Ask yourself that sometimes because we do need to disrupt ourselves. Am I going to die if I don't get this done? No. Am I going to die if I don't get this done? No. Hmm. I'm going to take some time out and do something that gives me fun, that energizes and refuels and recharges me. And then I can do my work tomorrow. Yes. So it's not all equal, right? Sometimes work, sometimes little work. Sometimes big work, sometimes little work. And that's what we've got to look at. So we're looking at getting that whole dynamic thing. It's not set in concrete. Mm. It moves. It's dynamic. You know, yeah, sometimes you have to work on a sad day or Sunday, and that's okay. But you know what? How else? Where else? What can you do to move that stuff around to make it easier on you so you're still gaining freedom, you're still being productive, and then tomorrow you're like, done all that stuff that I need to do. I'm going to have some fun and have some freedom. Okay, yes. that's what we're looking at. Yes. So the thing we want to do that we really want to pinpoint here is to have meaningful daily achievement and enjoyment. When you find meaning in what you're doing, when it means something to you, then you are going to put in your work. You're going to put in your effort, and it is easier. It is freer for you. It comes with ease. And when you go, good work for the achievement, for the accomplishment, you are highly likely to enjoy what you're doing a whole lot more. Yes. All right? Absolutely. The cost of it, and this is pretty horrendous, and see, I find this really challenging because I um, like to have fun and enjoy my time. <laughs> so I find this kind of weird that people who worked greater than three hours longer per day, listen to that again, people who worked greater than three hours per day required – then required. Then required. Thanks for that. It's that freedom thing. <laughs> yeah, it's that freedom thing. I need to put my glasses on. Actually. <laughs> People who work around three hours longer per day than required had a 60% r increased risk of heart problems. You know the thing in here that makes you live? The thing that says, yep, I'll keep going for you all the time. Don't talk to me. Don't ask me to keep going. I will just work for you. I will just keep going for you. That thing in here that dedicates its entire life for you to be your awesome self just keeps going without you having to ask it to work. Mm. And you put it under all of that kind of stress and strain and pressure by working three hours or more longer per day than required, and it's more than double. Yeah. The chance of the fringes. That, that little thing in there that goes, okay, I'll dedicate my entire life to keeping you alive, to keeping you being your awesome self. And we know that the heart really does a whole lot more than just beat, right? It's the kind of the little home of where your soul is of who you truly are. Who you truly are is your authentic self. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of important. And 26% of work is done outside of regular working hours. If that's a quarter of your work that you do outside of working hours. Stop it, right? 40% use their computers after 10 p.m. at night. The problem I have, I don't care if you use your computer after whatever time, the thing that really aggravates me here, you're reducing your optimal sleep. You are purposefully going, you don't deserve to go to sleep yet. You don't deserve to go to sleep yet and get optimal sleep. You don't deserve it. That's what you're doing. That is what you're doing. So the negative impacts of this, the cost of not having this whole work-life balancing, probably. It's huge. It's burnout, stress, problems in relationships, and then you're going to have physical and mental ill health. All right? We all have physical and mental health, but if you keep pushing this, you're going to have physical and mental ill health. All right? And that thing in there goes, I'm dedicating my life to you, sunshine. It's a bit kind of scary when we think about these things of the cost. Yeah. So, what do I need to do? Yeah, pretty scary stats, all right? So, what yeah. do I need to do is in the chat box right here, right now, is to type in the words. What are the words that you think of when your work and life is unbalanced? What are those words that come to mind when your work and life is unbalanced. Type those in the chat box, please. Allow yourself to have that come through. Allow yourself to just to release that. What are those words that come into your head 
When you think of your work and life being unbalanced, overwhelming, resentment, stress, overwhelm. It's pretty freaky, eh? Ruined relationships, tired, stressed, anxious, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty tough, eh? Anxious, panicked. tired, panicked. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, shit, all right. <laughs> ah. And this is what we're doing to ourselves. Just, just check in on that. Feel like crap. Yeah, yeah. And these are the things to really start thinking of is, you know what? Is we're actually doing it to ourselves. We're actually doing it to ourselves. Mm. So what we want to say to you here is that like, we've been in this game for over 20 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over 20 years we have. And we want to tell you is that you don't have to keep having the imbalance in your life, right? This is us feel exploited, yeah. This is us telling you another one of these truths. So, so this is us, all right? We want to share this with you to go, you don't have to keep having this imbalance in your life. We're yeah. telling you right here, all right? You don't. So if you need to be told that, you're being told that right here. You don't have to keep that going. That imbalance, you do not have to keep it. And you don't have to buy into the social construct of overwork. You must do more, you must do more, career and progression, you must do more to look good, you must do more, you must do more. Wouldn't it? Bullshit. Mm. Mm. You don't have to. And you don't have to let control of your life go. You don't have to let other people have the remote to your life. Take the friggin' remote back. Become the CEO of your own life. Yes. And so you know what? I'm gonna look after you, I'm gonna look after you too. Right? Tell yourself that. You don't have to have a hard and tough life to be successful. You don't have to have a hard and tough life to enjoy life. You don't have to have a hard and tough life to get anywhere in life. You can have freedom and productivity. Yes. And we are telling you that right now. Yes. You're being killed. <laughs> Tell and tell again. <laughs> so we kind of did discover this the hard way and <laughs> yep. what I want to do is just give you a little bit of insight into learning from our mistakes all right so you get to do it the easy way yes and you get to do it the easy way <laughs> by noting that see because for a little while and I thought I needed to do this for a while because I was teaching at Les Mills Gym in Wellington I was program coordinator of five programs. I was managing staff. I was still lecturing and teaching. I was still doing outside consultancy as well. And I was still running up and down to Palmerston North. This was in New Zealand because both mum and dad were sick at that time and they were looking after my two nephews. They were young kids. And so I thought I had to be responsible for all of that and myself. And I thought the easiest thing to do was just to keep saying yes. Because then I'd be able to take care of work. I'd get paid good money for that. Then I'd be able to take care of mum and dad. I'd keep doing the gym because that would be a good way to keep fit and healthy. And then I'd keep doing everything else that I had going on as well and do the consultancy because that was a really good way to keep doing the thing that I apparently enjoyed. And then it was like, okay, so I'm really improving the lives of those people and I'll keep going to the gym and improving the lives of those people and keeping them fit and healthy and I'll keep looking after mum and dad because they were sick as well and I'll keep doing what I need to for my nephews because they need to have, you know, the decent role models and, and they had Nana and Granddad doing an amazing job as well and all those kinds of things. And I'll keep working and teaching and looking after these people and the students and the same. So I just kept saying yes and got overloaded with it all. And then I did actually lose really good relationships that I had because I didn't have time in my head to keep those going. And when I did have any downtime, I was too friggin' tired. And so when I'd finish any single one of those things, all I'd do was just stop and crash. And then I would got totally over-focused on working, needing to do more. And I did get extremely ill. And then because I didn't actually stop properly from any of that, that shit came back when I got over here too. So I hadn't actually dealt with the shit. I'm working too much of over there. I did crash and burn over in New Zealand. As well. And then I came here and then I was in the same place and I started to go back into those old habits. So like before we said, those old habits started to creep back in. I was like, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Yes, of course I'll do that. Yes, of course I'll do that. And then got a cancer diagnosis in 2016. And didn't look after myself. And so I went, hmm, okay. The body wins. The body says, you're going to stop if I have to stop you myself. And it believe me, okay? And then I missed lots of amazing opportunities because I was totally focused on doing the wrong things. Mm -hmm. 
I was totally focused on working and saying yes and trying <laughs> to look good out there. And I had no respect for that. I had no respect for that. And I had no respect for this. And I kept going. And because I thought I had to do it the hard way, because I was like, mm, those people got to where they are by doing lots and going on and on and on and on and on. And so, yeah, I was exploited. I felt like crap. I was tired. I was panicked. All of those kinds of things. So the mission that we have got now and the mission that I have is to get the best out of you no matter what. I will live my life with fun energy. I will be honest with you and myself. I will fully respect you and myself. I will do whatever it takes. Have fun downtime. Say no with no apology. And then the coolest thing is that we worked with one of these people here, Dr. Olivia King, in one of our programs. And the coolest thing here is in the middle, she developed a range of useful strategies to boost her self-confidence, to push that annoying voice aside and keep striving. And she truly believes now yeah. that she has a whole lot to offer. And you know what? She took on jobs, she took on roles, and she started doing things that she had actually thought she couldn't do. And she actually said to me one of the times after this was like, you know what? I said no to a project that I thought was like, oh, beforehand. And then a couple of weeks after, they came to me with a different project, and I said yes. It was way above what I thought I was capable of doing, but because I had more clarity in my head, I took that role on, and now I've made time to totally focus on that. And these are the kind of things to start looking at, okay? So it's sort of the thing to keep to, in that sense – is to be able to go, what do I need to do? How do I keep myself to be balanced? Because you've got to identify what your focus and what it is that you're doing. Why are you here? You know, and as much as we all, oh, that's a big philosophical question. <laughs> Why are you here? I'm not here to work my ass off and go drive myself sick to the bone for someone else to exploit me. Fuck that shit. I'm here to have fun. I'm here to share my message. I'm here to look after that thing. And I'm here to look after this. All of this. My reputation, my identity comes from me, not from anybody else. I am not on the other end of someone else's remote. And neither are you. We told you that before. You do not have to be in that state. You do not have to be there. So these three keys that we're going to take you through right here, right now, is gaining your work-life balance. And you take that back. You take that back yes, and yes. you own that shit, yes. right? You are the CEO of your life. Yes. And the first place you start is your identity. Now, it was a set in our blog. Who are you? <laughs> Think of that. We've got one of our mates from New Zealand. He's, a, he's British or English and he goes to the football. Like, Who are you? Who are you? And that's what I always think of. Who are you? What is your identity? What are your values? What are your beliefs? You know, are you a strong, powerful person or are you powerless? Do you have a voice? Do you step up and you allow people to hear your voice and see you? Or do you squish down a little small and hide in the corner and go, yes, yes? Because you think that you have to do what they tell you to do. They didn't get you here on this earth. You got yourself here. You need to identify who you are, what makes you tick. What is your identity? What is your beliefs? What are you doing here? What is your purpose? What role are you playing? Because when we're inauthentic, that's a mistake and a maker. If we're not being authentic and true to ourselves, we're playing someone else's puppet. And I ain't going to be someone else's puppet. I'm going to be me. I wrote a book when I was in primary school, like in standard two, I think, standard three. And even then, I called it I am me. And you can do that too. Identify what your values and beliefs are. Who you see yourself as. Who do you see yourself as? Do you see yourself as that strong, powerful person? As that person that can step up and have your voice that can go, no, I can't do that today. Let me have a look at my diary. Ching, ching, ching. I can do that next Wednesday afternoon. Would that work for you? Because that's the time I've got available. I can help you out then. It's not too difficult really, is it? We make it difficult for ourselves. So jump in here and identify what your values are. I jump in there and ask yourself, who are you? 
Who do you see yourself as? Do you create a culture for yourself? Create your own culture of who you are. Be your own brand. Don't be anyone else's brand. Don't live up to what someone else wants you to be. Because you know what? It's your life. It's not theirs. Yes. So what do I need to do? Two seconds. Let's just think of this. Imagine your life of being who you are. Imagine being your own identity. Imagine being that powerful person. And I'm not talking of, you know, authority, not power over, power with and through. You can influence. You can inspire people. Imagine being able to engage in activities where you share who you truly are and your own identity. You're in a workspace being yes. your true identity. Woo. Love it. Would you want to do that? Would you want to be yourself in your own workspace and in your own life? Because they are actually together. The best way you run and operate your life is as life, not as two separate entities or three separate entities or five separate entities. You are the CEO of your life. Yes. And they all come together. And you, you play who you are. You be who you are. Because that's the way it's going to be. So when you imagine that and go, that's me, I can stand up and say this. I might be nervous, and that's good. <laughs> and then I can do this and think this, and I can say the words of who I truly am. Because when you say, you know what, the second key, and when you say those words, it's about your self-talk. And the thing about self-talk is you talk to yourself with ease. You talk to yourself with compassion. You respect yourself. Mm. Yes. Because if I sat here going, oh, you're useless. That was really dumb. This is really stupid. You know, I've made another mistake. You better sort that out. Not very good, are you? You're doing a bad job. I'm not going to employ you anymore. Why do you think you deserve to be paid so much? Who do you think about? Oh, my gosh, you're a useless mother as well. Oh, look at you. You can't even cook. You can't clean. You can't. Starts to feel pretty bad, eh? Mm. Mm. Does. Apparently, it's not all right for other people to tell you that. So while you're having your little nano tanty on the other end, you go, oh, fuck, how rude is that? <laughs> you do that to yourself. Yes. And that's what we've got to think about is what is that self-talk that we say to ourselves in our top six inches? Keep thinking about that. You know, who do you want to be? If you want balance and ease and freedom in your day, then you've got to go and chase that sucker down. And that's the stuff you've got to say to yourself. If that's what you want in your life and you want ease and you want freedom and you want high productivity and you want times to be able to do things for you, if you want to be you, if you want to have those moments to go, I'm going on holiday, I'm taking my leave, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to see those people and I'm going to sit here and enjoy the sun and enjoy this coffee or drink or whatever it might be or read my book, then you chase that sucker down and you make that happen in your life, yes. in your entire life not just in one entity. You take back that remote control and you tell yourself that you are the CEO of your own life and you tell yourself the things that you want to hear that will get you to be that person. Yes. You do not have to sit there. If you say to yourself in your top six inches over and over and over again, oh, I don't have time for that, oh, I can't do that, then you're right. But if you want to go in there and you want to chase that shit down and you want to be in there talking compassionately to yourself because you're saying the things that you want to say to get you to be at that level. Because you know what? <laughs> Life is a beautiful opera. Mm. But you know what? That opera hurts. Now, you can have a choice in your head. You can choose to say those words to yourself, oh, this hurts, it's too hard, I can't do this, there's too much pain, but all this hurt keeps coming with me. Or you can choose to listen to that opera and you can choose to engage in the amazingness of that music and you can create your own music of ease, freedom and productivity. And that is the choice that you have in here of what you say to yourself. Yes. And how fantastic is that? Because you can take that remote back. You can take that decision. We can give you all the information and all the knowledge that you need. You can get so much, something like 23 billion, million pieces of 
information on the internet. It's mm. huge. You can you can look at this. You can read about this. You can investigate all this stuff about work life balance. But if you don't make a decision to make a change and follow through with action, then it will not happen. And yes, as Jen put in the in the in the box in here. Yes, there are demands from other people, and Christina's touched on this as well. Other people go, oh, you must do this. Oh, you're an ECR. Oh, you're a mid-career. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. Oh, you're an RA. Oh, you're a PhD candidate. Oh, you're an ASPROF. Oh, you're a whatever. It doesn't matter where you are. They go, you must do this. You must do this. Keep saying yes to opportunities. Keep going this. Keep doing this. Don't, don't close anything down. You never know what might happen. You want to put this on your CV. This is really good for your CV. You need to increase this. You need to increase that. And the pressure from that is huge. But remember, like Christine said, you are the CEO of your life. Mm -hmm. They do not control your life. You do. How cool is that? You take it back. You determine which of those three opportunities you pull into what you want to do. Is it in your field of, of, of fun? Is it in your field of interest? Is it in the field that just absolutely pushes your buttons and floats your boat because if it doesn't, then it's going to be drudgery and it's going to drain you and pull things down. And if you're pushing through and doing those extra hours for a period of time and you're doing it in something you love, then it actually energizes you and it takes you to a whole new level. But if you're doing it in something that is like, I just have to do this because I have to get through this, mm -hmm. it will drain you. It will pull you down. It will give you all of those costs that we looked at, which are huge. And scary. Absolutely scary. So we have the third key. Okay, so the first two keys, we've looked at those. And this is the third key that we're going to look at as well. And this links very specifically to what people say. And it's about setting boundaries. And you might go, yeah, 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 yeah. I set boundaries. I turn my computer off at midnight. That's a boundary. I let my student know that I'm going to not do this today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. That's a boundary. I... Mm, what else do I do? Oh, my gosh. And we've just actually done a three-day challenge with a whole lot of people in, in our Facebook page. And it's really cool to see what people actually do and say and respond with. And I know there's a whole lot of lurkers in there as well who are getting <laughs> benefits from this because we get emails from other people going, oh, my gosh, that line you did on blah, that actually really spoke to me and made a difference in my life. Because if we have a boundary... It's saying, I matter. Yeah. I've worked out what my identity is. I've worked out what my self-talk is. And it's like, this is a boundary I'm putting in here. Now, as you see in this picture, this boundary has gaps. Because as an authentic person and as an authentic leader, and we all lead ourselves, okay? It doesn't matter what your job title is. We are all leaders of ourselves. Otherwise, we wouldn't even get out of bed. So we are all leaders of ourselves, the people around us, the people we interact with, doesn't matter where that is, your team members, the students you might interact with, your flatmates, your family members, the community, clubs that you're involved in. We're all leaders to some degree, mm -hmm. absolutely. So as an authentic leader, we need to be able to be flexible and adaptable because it's all about being resilient as well. And if we put up a brick wall and go, absolutely nobody through here, no, 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 we will often get stuck. My my walls, my boundaries in life previously were either a brick wall or nothing. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that soon and how that was one of the things I did very wrong in my life and learned the hard way. And so that's why we're bringing this type of thing to you today. So you needing to have boundaries in place that are firm but they can be a little bit flexible and you can get something through it if you need to or you can adapt it and it might be okay I never work past 7 p.m at night mm -hmm. and there might be a project that you're just absolutely sold on or a grant that you're getting through that you're just absolutely wanting to be involved with and you know that for those two weeks you might have to work a little bit later but as Christine said around that what are you doing around that 
How are you adjusting and being flexible around your life as well? Because you can't just expand one area and not do anything with the others. And if you've got added demands with family members, somebody might be really sick and you've got different demands from family members, it's like, okay, so that needs to increase. What else am I going to do around it? Remember, it's never 888, mm -hmm. never, ever. We, it, the, the whole fallacy of that is just ridiculous and we cannot get it and we should not even try. And I don't usually say cannot and I don't usually say should. Or and try. I don't usually say try. <laughs> because they're really disempowering words. Absolutely disempowering words. So throw those out of your self-talk if that's what you're using because that doesn't help us. So empowering is like, how can I put this boundary in place? If somebody's demanding of your time, how can you put a boundary in place? Mm. I can't do this today. However, next Monday I have a slot. Let's have a chat about it at this time and I'll walk you through how to do it. It's putting a boundary in. Why should somebody else's demand keep coming in on top of you? Why should it keep coming in and flood on top of you? So it's really, really important to have boundaries for ourselves in work and also in our personal lives. Personal lives, one Personal life boundaries can be things around when people spend want to spend heaps of time with you and it's like, oh, that person's a real drainer. <sighs> They're a friend. I've known them for 25 years, but I just, at the end of it, I was just like, oh, I just feel really drained. But I don't want to stop the friendship because we've known each other for so long. We've been through so much together. I was like, fine. Then put a, put a boundary in place. I was like, yeah, I can see you from two to three that day. That's awesome. And then I've got something I need to go to instead of extending like five hours. So you're putting a boundary in place because you've worked out who your identity is, you've worked out what you stand for, what your values are, and you've organised that self-talk in the head so that you don't leap into guilt. You actually mm. go into the whole thing of, I deserve time out. I deserve some fun in my life. Yes, you do. I deserve lightness and not so much stress. I deserve lightness and calmness. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And if you need permission to actually think like that, like Christine said before, we would love to give you permission right here, right now, mm, that you. you do deserve this. We all deserve this. No one deserves to keep working and working and working and working to the bone and having that massive, big, huge emphasis and push down on top of all of your freedoms and excitement and enjoyment of life. You don't deserve that. You deserve freedom. So I want you to imagine this for, for a minute. Okay, I'm going to get you to ask you to close your eyes wherever you are. Just make sure your feet are flat on the floor. I'm just going to get you to do a bit of imagery. Okay, come with me. I'm not going to do anything scary or make any big loud noises. Well, I might get excited, as we said. <laughs> but I'm not going to, not going to, not going to, um, Give you a fright. <laughs> That's the word. Okay, so imagine this. Come with me. Imagine yourself in the future. It can be one month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, doesn't matter. Imagine yourself in the future where you have created the work life balance that makes you happy. You have created the space to be you. You have created the way to set boundaries and you do not feel guilty about it because other people's opinion of you is none of your business. And you can go, actually, this cannot be done today. I can do it tomorrow and have it by, to you by 5 o'clock tomorrow. Is that going to work for you? And if it's not going to work, then how can we work through this? We have the skills, we have the ability to go, here's a boundary, this is the self-talk in my head, I can do this, I can find a way, I can work this out. I'm the CEO of my own life. I can actually choose whether I take this opportunity or that one. I can choose if I put this one and say no to that or this one. Because if we focus on opportunities and we focus on what is out there, and being our real, authentic self, then the more opportunities open up. They just do. 
I've experienced it. The people we work with absolutely experience it. And when you shift your focus from the, I can't do this, I have to do this. I can't do this, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to say yes. I cannot say no. I cannot do that. When you shift your focus from that BS to one of having lightness and freedom and the ability to make choices, imagine that. How amazing could that be? So that's what we're wanting for every single one of you on here. So open your eyes, come back to where we are, and I'm going to get you to pop something in the chat box as well. So can I share a case study with you? Would you like to hear that? Yes or no? Just a wee case study from somebody that we have worked with a couple of years ago. Yes, please. Okay. Awesome. So I'll talk you through how these three keys do work. So let's call her Maria. We'll call her Maria, not her name. She's uh, just on the cusp of early to mid-career researcher. She's early 30s. She's single, and she's already had her first grant. She was already leading, heading up a project in the lab. But she was doing amazing, absolutely amazing. People would come to her for information. She was just beginning to, to have her own PhD students. She was being asked to collaborate on other grants and projects and it was like it was all happening because she was saying yes 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 for the last 19 years and she was developing her career she was absolutely excited about what she was doing her field of expertise was growing and she was just in the place of amazing amazing amazement incredible place of growing her career forward she could totally see what she wanted to do for the next 10 20 and 30 years she had it mapped out she was on this place and then the cost happened mm. the cost to her was her mental and physical health in a huge huge way absolutely huge huge way and she began rebuilding her life over the over a couple of years before we met her and regrowing and redeveloping what her areas of what she was saying yes to or no to. And we worked with her and helped her to recognize how to how to understand her responses to stress. We worked with her to help put in those boundaries for herself personally and the workplace. And the most amazing email that we got from her at one stage was like, oh my gosh. For the first time, I think it was 11 years, in 11 years, I have had a weekend where I did not touch my computer. And we knew how significant that was. Yep. And this may be exactly what is significant for you as well, or it may be something different. But the fact that she allowed herself to not touch the computer, not do any work, was absolutely huge. Six months later, she had a one-week holiday. A holiday. That was her first holiday since she left university where she did not work. She had fun. She connected with people. She did things she'd never done before. She goes, oh, my gosh. She just discovered this whole world of fun. She goes, oh, my gosh, I've just done this. And she's seen us videos and, and showed us things. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. Absolutely so cool. Because you're able to create freedom with your life when you have some balance. And within that, it's like knowing who you are, who your authentic self is. Yes way. Yes way, King Matt. Yes, it was huge. It was absolutely amazing. And we understood how huge that was. We know how huge that is that she was able to put those things in place and feel good about it. Mm. It was not guilt around it because we worked around that negative self-talk. We worked around that. And she was able to create the balance. She was able to, to go, I work really hard here and I ease off here. I work really hard this part of the day and I ease off here. I work really hard this part of the week, I ease off here. She was able to do this. So it's that flex and flow. And it was that whole thing of creating that balance. And as we said, right, we get it. sometimes your day might be like this. Sometimes my day's like this. And the next day it's like this. But within this day, that's pretty big. I have moments all the way through 
to make sure I'm refilling my cup. I just don't, I don't just work for those 12 or 13 hours or 14 hours. I work for here and I have this that break. I do this here and I do that break. I set myself up at the beginning of the day to make sure that I can get through the day having vitality, having energy, and being able to contribute to other people like we do. So old habits do die hard. Now, your work-life balance is around or is totally around what you do in habits. So has this been useful so far? Let me know if it's been useful. Has some of this been useful? I'm going to keep going. We can't cover everything in this one-hour class, masterclass. Of course not. And remember, we've got a special bonus for those who are staying to the end. It is so worth it. So make sure that you're still here. Fantastic. Good, good. So awesome to hear that. 100%. Thanks, Roslan. Okay, so old habits do die hard. And your work-life balance habits are patterns of behavior. Yes. They are habits. They are what you do. They're what you always do. They've been created through your BS, through your culture, mm -hmm. through the culture of STEM, through your understanding of others. They've been created by all of those things. But you, right here, right now, you get to choose. You get to choose whether you stay in those habits or with this information, whether you get to choose if you want to make a decision and take action to a different place. Are you ready to make a decision and do action differently? Or are you just going to listen to this webinar and then get to the end of it and then go, oh, that was really inspiring. It was really cool. I need to do this. I need to do this. And then next week, you're still doing the same thing. Midnight. Yeah, I'll turn this off now. Oh, I said yes again. Oh, far out. How the fuck are we going to put that in my day? Because once you take that back, that control back, little, little by little, a little thing first, Somebody this week said, I'm actually going to put a boundary in for my in-laws because they sat the life out of me. <laughs> and it was like, yep, cool. And she goes, I'm going to make the boundary like this and I've got my husband on board and this is what we're going to do. She says, because that's what I'm needing to do because otherwise I just feel that I can't be me. She was absolutely thrilled that she got to the point that she could do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awesomely thrilled. Because when you do this, you'll have more time for your connections, more time for fun, more time for leisure and pleasure. Some of you on here may have forgotten yes. what fun, leisure and pleasure is. Because you've been so caught up in that whole winky wonky lack of balance. Mm. So it's really important to take the action and make a decision to do it differently. Imagine for a moment if you were to do this. Imagine if you were to work out your identity in more detail, work out how to flip around that self-talk from that negative stuff, that guilt, that shame, mm. that I have to because otherwise I'll miss out. I, don't, I have to do this because I have to be seen by the team to do this. I can't say no. I can't say no. How many times do you hear yourself saying I can't say no? And not that I can't say no, but I can't say no because otherwise I won't get this or get recognised. Imagine going from that feeling of overwhelm, stress, exhaustion, panic that you talked about before, being exploited mm. and knowing that your own identity is authentic and knowing that you can experience work-life balance. This can totally happen for you. What if you could turn this around? It, it would turn your life and your career on its head. Mm -hmm. And you could actually achieve whatever you want with ease. Imagine, what if what if I would be like that? It would be so super cool. Then you have two choices. Yeah. The first option is to finish this webinar, go back to what you did before, do nothing, and go, oh, I need to do something. Oh, I need to do something. Oh, I did it once, but it didn't work. Oh, I need to do something different. Well, what was that thing they talked about? Oh, I did it once. Oh, it was really hard. Oh, I feel so guilty. Oh, I'll just stop doing it. You can either do that or you can do the second choice, mm -hmm. which is take action. Make a decision and take action. Make a change. Work out your identity. Develop your self-talk that serves you. Set those effective boundaries in place so that you can grow and develop what you are doing. Now, I'm nothing special. Part of my life, I absolutely crashed and burned because I kept saying yes. I was shit at setting boundaries. 
I never set boundaries. I was a people pleaser. I thought I had to make everything right with my family, my two my two teenage daughters, my my work, my study, my community involvement, my husband. And it just I, I kept to keep saying yes, yes, yes. Because I thought that was what I had to do. That was my role. And I absolutely crashed and burned. I didn't know who I was. I totally could not say no. But I am have turned this around. Over the last 18 years of my life, I've totally turned this around. And I can do it. And if I've done it, you can too. It's just a matter of learning the strategies, recognising who you are as an authentic person, identifying self-talk and turning it around and putting those boundaries in place and changing those habits and routines on a regular basis. You totally can do this. So we're giving you a bonus, absolute bonus, no sales today, an absolute bonus of a free 15-minute clarity call. I love this picture. We just had to have that. <laughs> the clarity call is coming at you in the chat box, so you'll see it come up there. If you want to book a clarity call with us, a free 15-minute, it's not sales, it's no obligation, it's to work on one thing to work on one thing. If you have made a decision during this webinar that you want to do something differently in your life and shift that balance, mm -hmm. then this is your opportunity today to say yes. You can either say yes or no because you are in control. You are the CEO of your life and you can do either either. So this is the bonus for you today because if you want to develop more work-life balance and that's why you are called to press that button and register for this webinar, then you can get support to keep identifying your identity in more detail, to work out who you really are inside, not all the BS from all the other services and the people and the bosses and the managers and the systems that you're working in, it's to work out who you really are. Who is your authentic self? Who, who, who are you inside? And to cultivate that positive self-talk so that we don't go, oh, my gosh, I can't say no because of this. I was like, oh, they'll think I'm terrible. Oh, I'm shit. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't do that. I can't do this. Because you're going to action also putting in effective boundaries. And how cool would that be if you were able to do all of these three keys yes. to be able to get more freedom and even more productivity because we often think that if we do less we're less productive but that's another myth that we're busting yep and there's many much research out there that busts it as well because there's ways of focusing there's ways of being focused there's ways of identifying our authentic self and our strengths and how we do what we do and go forward with who we are so that we can pull all these things in together and we can have that web and flow. We can have those times of being agile, of being flexible, of being adaptable and going, okay, we're stretching here, but I'm putting these things in to keep myself going. And then I'm going to pull back over here. Mm -hmm. Because if we just go, 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 we crash and we can burn. And we do not want that for you because work-life balance is not about that. It's about being able to have those ebbs and flows, knowing who you are, knowing your identity, being able to change that negative mindset and shift into that positive, optimistic self-talk so that you can set those boundaries for yourself and your workplace in amazing, amazing ways. So when you listen to that Amazing opera. When you listen, when you are part of that beautiful opera of life, it is your choice. Because, yep, you have practice. You do have to put in the time, the effort, the energy, the money, the, the finances, the, the, the relationship commitments, the sacrifices, all those times, effort, energy, everything. You've got to put that in yes. to hear that beautiful sound. And for you to be part of that beautiful opera, you can choose. Do I focus on the hurt and the pain and the time and the energy that gets sapped out of me and the things that I have to do? Or 
do I identify who I actually am and go, this is me and all of my identity? Who are you? The self-talk in my head says, keep training, keep practicing, keep learning, keep going. Do the things that bring out the best in you. We put the boundaries in place that say, yes, I need to do my training and practice here. Yes, I need to learn some new notes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I need to team up with other people so we can make the magic sound even better than it already was. Yeah. And you can focus on that and hear that beautiful opera of life. And that's totally within your hands. The remote is in your hands. Yes. You have the only title that you're ever allowed to throw around in life is that you are the CEO of your own life. Yes. You are making the magic music if you choose to. And this is where you get to do that and to keep going forward. Yes. And so when you're able to identify all of that, you have the freedom. Yes. You have effective and efficient productivity. Because you'll have balance. And it's not just work-life balance. It's life balance. It's total life balance. Because it is about who you are as a person. And it's about the music that you play in life. Yes. And when we all work together, and when we all do things that we need to do for ourselves and for each other, it comes with ease and freedom. And can you imagine how amazing that music sounds? Mm, when we all yeah. work together and we all do it, it sounds like one piece. Yes. And that's what we want to do because it is one piece when we all put it together. It yes. is absolute pure balance. You get freedom yes. when you do that. So that's why we're here. That's what we're offering to you is to find that balance. Yes. Is to be able to find the little intricacies that you can tweak and change in life so that opera – Sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> and that's what we want to do. That's what we want to share with you in life. Yes. So thank you so much for being here today because this is investing in yourself for some more work-life balance. And we hope that we haven't only just inspired you but or scared you, <laughs> but that you are now going to take action. Mm. Make a decision to take action and do it differently because you are worth it. Thank you so much for being here today. We'll catch you another time. Thank you to all those people <laughs> that have booked in too. You legends, we see your action. Thank you very Excellent. much. Excellent. Well done for taking action. Brilliant. Have a fantastic day, night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for being here. Thank you, people. <laughs>